Caitlin. Richard and Stephanie, you can see the cars pouring into this parking lot, people walking into those doors behind me. They're picking up these programs for Jessica Chambers visitation. And again, things are just getting started now. We keep hearing people describe Jessica as this smiley, bubbly, outgoing girl. And her family is just now realizing they're going to have to say goodbye. I'm, I'm numb. Ben Chambers says he tries not to let his mind go there. No, and no, and no, what kind of what kind of torture she went through. That's what's so hard, you know, that I wasn't there. On the day of his 19 year old daughter's visitation, Chambers asked you to pray for his family and the only people who can truly bring them peace. I want everybody to pray for our sheriff's department, you know, because I know they're working so hard day and night, you know. Chambers works as a mechanic for the sheriff's office. He knows investigators are doing all they can to find whoever lit his daughter on fire along this country road last weekend. Right now, these are the only types of answers Sheriff Dennis Darby can give. Hoping for the time that we can call you back, and we will, and let you know what we have. WREG is hunting for the incident report from the night of Jessica's murder, but neither the DA nor the sheriff's office could provide one almost one week after Jessica's murder. In a couple weeks more, it'll be Christmas without Jessica and maybe without answers. So hard, man. It's just so hard. <sighs>And again, the visitation is from 5 to 8 tonight. The funeral is at 2 tomorrow. We just spoke with one of Jessica's cousins who, again, is begging the public to come forward with any information about what might have happened to Jessica, who could be behind it. And the family's asking anyone that wants to send memorials to the most renaissance bank in Batesville. Reporting live in Panola County, Caitlin Alexander, WREG News Channel 3.